All right, we're good. All right, Nick, you're on the spot today. I've got uh, I've got a, uh, an important question to ask you for all of our bars and breweries and even our restaurants that um, our readers at nextrestaurants.com. They want to know what are the promotions that they can count on that will always work, that don't suck. Not the ones that are tried and true that everybody does, but ways they can run promotions <laughs> that are always going to be successful. Um, I've asked you to think through maybe three elements or three ideas or three promotions that you could bring to the table. Do you got... You got something you can share for us today? I, I, I do. I do. And before I get started on those, I think it's important for the viewers, the listeners, uh, to understand what people really want when they go to a bar um, or restaurant for a promotion. You know, a lot of people, they're, they're getting out of the house because they're bored at home, but they want some kind of interaction. They want fun. They want exciting. So what makes a good promotion is... A good experience you know when they can go to that bar they can go to that restaurant walk out of there and say I had a great time tonight you know yeah. so, so that's the one thing to think about is that when you're putting a promotion together as a bar owner you know especially it's like what can we do to make it more interactive to get to get the crowd involved to make it fun to make them want to come back so anytime I'm putting a promotion together I always try to think of that you know to, to try to place myself in the shoes of the customer and and what I would want when I went to a bar or restaurant. So one of the things, I mean, it's, it, it's common sense, but for one of the promotions I always like running is some kind of prize or giveaways, you know, and one of the things that we do is we have what's called a, a spin the wheel promotion. So one day out of the week from five to seven, every 10 minutes, we will spin this wheel and we have 50 paint sticks and there's uh, 50 slots on the actual wheel. Now, the first 50 people in the door are going to get one of these paint sticks. And we give away, we'll buy their meal, we'll buy them a drink, we'll give them, you know, like some small little party packages for up to four people. We'll get stuff from Bud and Miller and some of our liquor reps to just give away. But it's something where people are going out to eat. They're hungry, they don't want to sit at home, but they can kind of be involved in sitting there where they still got a chance to win stuff. People are spinning the wheel, we're on the microphone, it's interactive, and people have a good time with that. And people love winning things you know so so that's that's one thing that that I tend to do and, and that my my clients do as well um, another thing that's always worked out real well is doing big prizes uh, flat screen TVs I mean they're pretty cheap these days if you think about it. I mean you can get a, a 40 52 inch TV from 300 to 400 dollars you bring in one of your sponsors Bud Miller or somebody else you know to maybe throw you some money for, for the promotion put their beer their their liquor whatever on special that day but get everybody in to, for a chance to win a TV. And, I mean, we'll see 50, 75 extra people in the door that, that come in for this. You know, and people love that. They love winning that. And how many of, of the other competitors out there are giving away $400 TVs? They're not. So you're standing out in the marketplace looking completely different than the competition, which is key these days because everybody's doing the same old stuff. And the goal of the bar owner, what, what, what I teach my clients is if you're spending this money on this TV and you're, you're bringing a bunch of people in the door, now it's your job to really be able to upsell, you know, maybe increase the prices a little bit, um, but really knowing how to, to upsell and, and increase those check averages, but also people stick around more. So one of the things we try to do to increase the check average is if they buy a full priced meal, not one of our, you know, uh, sometimes we'll do food specials like 50 cent wings, dollar 50 tacos, dollar 50 sliders, things like that. But if they buy a full price meal, you know, eight, nine, 10 bucks, they're going to get three extra chances to, uh, um, to win that TV or get three extra tickets for every drink they get, every be beverage, whether if it's a pop or beer, whatever it might be, they're going to get another ticket. So they know the more that they're spending, the better they have the chance to actually win the actual TV. So, that would be the first one with uh, you know prizes and giveaways. The second promotion that works extremely well is actually in-house leagues. This obviously works more with, with bars, but I mean restaurants could kind of do this with um, trivia or something else. But with in-house leagues, w what I mean by that is there's always pool, there's darts, um, there's what we call Bar Olympics at, at one of the bars that I own. And that is we get teams together, teams of two, and they play pool, they play darts, and they do indoor bags. And we have all of them compete with each other for 16 weeks. 
and we'll get anywhere from eight to 12 teams, you know, for each, each time that we do it. But that's 24 people consistently coming in every Tuesday or Wednesday when it's a slower night of the week. So you have that reoccurring, um, um, income coming in from, from these leagues. And again, it's fun, it's interactive and it's competitive. And that's what people like to do rather than just sit at home. They want to get some kind of interaction. Um, I mean, you could also do beer pong. I mean, there, there's all different types of things you can do with, with in-house leagues. It's just, it, it, it's a way to keep people coming back in, increasing sales and giving people something fun to do. Well, um, plus you got that. I, I would think you got that frequency piece coming in there. You've got, you've got a, a locked in audience. Audience that's going to be there for several weeks, right? It, it, exactly, and, and people love it. I mean, they have fun with it, and then customers see it, and they see how uh, the customers who aren't in it, they see how much fun everybody else is having. And they're like, "Hey, how can I get in it?" And now you got people who want to get in the next time that you're getting leagues, you know, together. And, and one of the smartest things that that you can do when you put these leagues together is definitely find out people who are interested, get their name, their information. Um, email address, cell phone number. So if the league is already running and you start another one, you can go back to contact these people and say, "Hey, we're at it again. Do you want to get in? You know, get in uh, during during this time? Or like sometimes we'll stop it during the summer because here in the Midwest, summertime sales really slow down for us just because it's nice out and people don't want to sit in a bar. So once fall comes back around, we have the last year's list of people and the year prior to that. So we got a list of 30, 40, 50, 60 people that we can call and say, hey, we're doing this. We're only taking 12 teams. Who wants in? And it's a very simple process to get it going. And now you have a consistent 24 people coming in, spending an average of 20, 30 bucks a night with you. So if you had a gun to your head and you can only pull off <laughs> one promotion, <laughs> would you go go big with with a single promotion where you're having a huge giveaway or would you would you put your money towards like a three week event where you would hope to get people coming back multiple times get so, several you know a lot of uh, a good group of people maybe in teams coming back um, multiple times what would you do that's a great question um, I've never been asked that question but I would much rather do the promotion that has a consistency of bringing people back in week after week rather yep. than just that one night. You know, I mean, you can pull off one night promotions left and right all the time. Um, but to have a good, consistent promotion that's bringing people in week after week, that's fun and interactive. That's yep. the key because you're going to make more money in the long run than you would with just that one night. Yep. How about how about running channels uh, or running your social channels? How do you incorporate your social network media, uh, whether it's your Twitter account or your Facebook page? How do you use those as sort of announcement channels or distribution channels to get the word out do you do you count on them much or are they just one piece of the puzzle what's your thoughts on that for just like in any promotion in general right yep um yeah well the first thing i always start out with that you know i i, I teach all my clients is we always start with list building we figure out a way to get people to hand over their personal contact information to us in order for to get a what i call a lead magnet a valuable offer so we're always list building so, and the reason for that is because if somebody's going to personally hand us their personal contact information, they're telling us they like us, trust us, want to do business with us, or they wouldn't be giving us that information. So these are the most profitable people in the world for us to market to, people who personally give us their information. So I start with that and we start by email. You know, we'll send them a nice personal email about what we're doing, what we have going on. Uh, maybe a text message the day before or the day of to just as a quick little reminder of what we have going on. Um, but definitely on, on our social media networks as well. I mean, with us having a big email list, we can target people on Facebook based on that email address. So we can follow people on Facebook, even on Twitter now, with our our promotion right in front of them, anywhere they look, when they're on their smartphone looking at their social media channels, we're popping up there because we're targeting yep. our list of customers. So we're always there in front of them. Um, cool. So, yes, I always do focus on our in-house list because that's the most profitable way for us to get people in the door. That's the whole point of list building so you don't have to use newspaper and radio and mailers. So I don't – I rarely, rarely, rarely ever use radio or newspaper for any kind of promotion because – I have a list of people who respond, who like getting my marketing, where I don't have to use that expensive mass media marketing anymore. You know, you just focus yeah. on the list that you have. Seems like the secret weapon then in any promotion, even though you've shared some cool ideas um, and fresh ideas. 
ideas. Maybe they're thinking bigger than most bar restaurant owners think currently or thinking longer, like loca- like in terms of time. Um, what the secret weapon here that we're talking about is having a list having a relationship with people to begin with so that you can tap into that list to get a group of them or get uh, as many of them to come back as you can. Sounds like that's sort of the secret weapon here. It definitely. And honestly, when I learned this concept back when I was a struggling bar owner, it's what changed my life, doubled my business is creating a list. But, you know, creating a list and gathering people's information is no secret. Every right. Everybody's heard of it. Fishbowl, you heard of it. Business card in the fishbowl, you've heard of it. But what most bar restaurant owners don't do is they don't use personalized marketing or even follow-up marketing. They get the names. They get everything. It sits on their desk. They have someone put it in their computer, and it sits there, and that's it. There's no communication. Or if there is communication, it's, hey, we have this on special today. I hope to see you. It's pretty boring. you know. Um, so, but that is the key. As long as you got the right follow-up and you can be personal and you can you know, really wow that customer and be different than the competition – you know, you're going to get them coming in the door. And, and the third thing, the third promotion that, that I haven't brought up yet, uh, Brandon, that I think is extremely, extremely important um, is charity events and fundraisers. And what's important about these is, number one, it builds customer loyalty. When people see that you're doing something good for the community, when they see you're doing something good for an organization, people respect that. And that makes them want to do business with you. Um, and it, it builds a better reputation for you. And the other you know, good thing for this is not that you're just doing good for somebody in the community and you're building, uh, um, building a, a better reputation with everybody, but you also do get free publicity out of this. I mean, the newspapers, TV channels, um, radio will bring you up that, hey, you're having this big promotion at your bar. So there are benefits to doing these kind of promotions. And the, big, the thing that I hate, that I hate to see You'll walk into a restaurant, you'll walk into a bar, and they'll say, oh, we're giving 10% of our sales to this charity organization. So you're telling me if we raise $1,000 for you, you're going to give us 100 bucks. You know, honestly, I think it's BS. And yeah. what I typically do for, for fundraisers, for charity events, is we'll put some kind of meal together, and we'll pre-sell tickets ahead of time, where that organization will sell these tickets, they will get their people to sell these tickets, and let's say the meal's 12 bucks, and our cost is... $3 in food, just the food cost. I'm not talking about labor. I, I throw the labor into that. Mm-hmm. But let's say it's $3. I give $9, that 100% profit, to that organization. And the reason I do that is because, number one, I care for the organization or the fundraiser, whoever I'm, I'm doing this for. I, I believe in helping people. And the more that you can help people, the more that you're going to get back. I know that when people see how much we're giving back, they're going to remember that. And they're going to want to continue to do business with us. So there's future sales involved, you know. But that's that's really the key is is building the trust, credibility within the the um, um, community, and, and getting people to come back and, and giving a good portion away. I mean, there's so many people who come to us month after month after month who want to do fundraisers, charity events at our bar because they know how much we give away. You know, we're not giving a little piece of the pie away. We're giving yeah. 100% of the profits away. Plus, we're doing a 50-50 raffle. So these guys can make or uh, uh, they, they can bring together three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000. I mean, some of them do $10,000 in a single day from some of the fundraisers and promotions they put together. However, it is on them to get their people in there to bring people into the bar. You know, yep. it's not our marketing costs and everything we do. But we say, hey, we'll put on a hell of an event for you. We've done this multiple times. And we're going to give you 100% of the food profits. We're going to get everything out there for you. We're going to clean up after you. We'll do everything for you. We want you to make money. We want it to be a success for you. And here's You just make sure you're bringing as many people as possible to the party, right? Exactly. Exactly. So it's a win-win both ways. Yeah, yeah. All right. So if I had to recap the three you mentioned, going big on pricing, that's number one. The second one you mentioned is in-house leagues where you've got a multi-week contest of some kind going on. You can build that around almost anything if you really wanted to. Right. But having an in-house league, people love competition. People love going head-to-head with people. And they like the idea of it's not a one-time thing. If they miss a week, it's it's spread out over the course of time. Right. And then the third th- third one you mentioned was um, charity events and yeah. fundraisers. Outside of those three, any last final words of wisdom that you throw out to people on, on ma- how to make sure that their promotions don't suck? Yeah, you know, the, the key thing, it's, it's all about what the customers want. So if you want to put together – 
an awesome promotion that's going to bring you a bunch of money, the very first thing you should do is you should go to your top 25 customers and say, listen, we want to do a new promotion. I'm clueless on what to do. What do you think would be a great idea? And hear what your customers want and deliver to those wants and give the customers what they want. And that's going to be a killer promotion right there. So it's not, you know, the, the first step is identifying who those top 25 people are, yeah. which a lot, a lot of bar, bar restaurants uh, will do. Um, I think you're a specialist in that, actually. That's that's what you help <laughs> bars and restaurants do. But that sounds like the, one of the first things that you really need to do is get to know your customers a little bit better so you can have a real relationship with them. And they can be some of your biggest advocates in bringing in groups of people at a time. and. It takes a lot of the pressure off you running the perfect promotion. You just run a cool promotion, have a great you know group of uh, loyal advocates um, that you have a good relationship with, and they'll help you spread the word. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Well, cool. Thanks for uh, sharing some promotion ideas with us. No um, I know our, our readers will love it, and I know your listeners should love it as well. Thanks for sharing them today. Awesome. Sounds good. Thanks, Brandon. You bet. I'll see ya.